Hi guys, welcome to today's tutorial on factorizing simple quadratic trinomials. First of all, let me just quickly explain what a quadratic trinomial is. Now look at an example like this. x squared plus 3x plus 2. Well, what first of all makes a trinomial? Well, let's think about that word tri. Tri often means 3. And what you'll notice here, we have 3 terms. So because there are three terms, this is called a trinomial. So that's the first thing. And what makes it qu a quadratic? Well, hopefully you remember a quadratic graph is when you have a power of 2 as your highest power. So any uh, expressions with x squared um, as the highest power is automatically a quadratic also, you might remember if you um, you looked at expanding brackets like this, x plus 1, x plus 2. Okay, um, let's have a look at this one. x times x, x squared. Well, it's a quadratic there automatically. x times 2 is the 2x. 1 times x is 1x. And 1 times 2 is 2. And often, remember, quad means 4. We get those 4 terms. But remember, we can simplify sometimes things like this. We've got 2x and 1x, which makes the 3x, which gives us x squared plus 3x plus 2. So it's still a quadratic, but it's just become a quadratic trinomial. And if you actually have a look at the top part, what do you notice? Hopefully you said that they're the same. So the whole idea of factorizing a quadratic trinomial will be um, the reverse of expanding the brackets. You'll be given that expanded form, such as x squared plus 3x plus 2, and you'll want to be putting them back into that bracket form of x plus 1, x plus 2. It can be quite challenging. I'm going to start off with a nice easy one to start with. We'll actually do the x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now, obviously, from that last example, we already know what the answer is going to be. Okay, that's at x plus 1, x plus 2. But we're going to look at a form that I call splitting the terms using a method that I call the PNDS method. So what does splitting the terms mean? Well, had I given you a, the question in this form, x squared plus uh, 2x plus 1x plus 2, you may well have been able to factorize some of it, because obviously that first thing, there's only three things there, and when we factorize, remember, we always look for the common factor. There's nothing that goes into all three terms. But if I now focus on the first two, what goes into x squared and 2x? Well, x does, which puts x times x is x squared, and x times 2 is the 2x. What goes into x and 2? Well, 1 does. We have x plus 2. And then what you'll notice, x plus 2 is common, so that's a common factor. We take that at the front, x plus 2. And what's left over is at the front, x plus 1. And look at that. We have what's outside the front of the brackets in the second bracket, and we have factorized. So if we're able to somehow start or get to this form of making that trinomial into four separate terms, then we can actually factorize it the long way that we're looking at here. So what the aim is, and this is what the splitting the terms means. Splitting the terms means I want to split this plus 3x up into two things. In this case, it happens to be 2x plus x. Once we can do that, we can then go through that factorizing process which we've done before. So, how do we split the terms? Well, this is what I call the P and S method. P stands for product. Okay, product. What does product mean? If I said the product of 2 and 3, hopefully you'd say it would be 6. Because product means times, and the sum means add. So we're going to be looking for a couple of combinations of numbers where they times together and add together to give a certain amount. So where's my product value come from? This product value which we're going to put here comes from the first number, which in this case is a 1. We can't see it, but we know it's there. The first number times the last number. Okay, so the 1 times the 2. So what's 1 times 2? Well, that's 2. The sum number comes from the 3. Okay, once you do this a couple of times, you'll get the hang of it. 
So again, my product value comes from the 1 times the 2, or the first times the last, and the sum is always the middle number. Now what we're going to be looking for, and this is where the product and sum method comes from, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give 2, but can be added or subtracted together to make 3. That's where the product and the sum comes from. So what are two numbers at times together to give 2? Well, 2 is a nice easy one because, it, because it's a, uh, a prime number and it only has two factors. So my two numbers can only be 2 and 1. So what order can I put 2 and 1 in order to make 3? Well, if I add them, 2 plus 1 makes 3. So then we get um, both positive numbers. And then what we, you can notice, once we get to that stage, we can now split that 3x up into the 2x and the 1x which makes the x squared plus 2x plus 1x plus the 2. So all I've actually done, <coughs> this process product and sum, is to split that 3x up into two terms. So we're splitting it into two different terms, 2x and 1x. And it doesn't matter which way you put them. You can put 1x and 2x. It doesn't really matter. It will still work out the same in the long run. And what you'll notice Okay, that's what we've got at the top there. x squared plus 2x plus x plus 2. And then we can go through and factorise to get to that x plus 2x plus 1. Okay. I know it's a fairly long process. We're going to do a few of these. And then we will look at it a shorter way. Because there's a bit of a trick. And, and we'll come back to this answer. Because there's a bit of a trick that um, hopefully you might start to see. Okay. Let's have a look at the next example. We're going to factorise... We use, um, let's say, x squared plus 4x minus 5. Okay, so this is going to be slightly more challenging because there's a minus in there. So my product and sum method, we put my p and my s. Now, in time, if you're getting good at it, you won't even need to write the p and s down. You'll simply look for those two numbers at times together and add together. But where's my p come from? Again, 1 times minus 5. What's 1 times negative 5? Well, it's negative 5. And then the middle number is 4. Now, I know you might be saying, hold on, the product is just always the last number. That only occurs when there's a 1 there. Because obviously 1 times negative 5 is going to be the negative 5. But if there was a 2, then obviously that would make it negative 10. So it's not always that last number. It's, it's always the first number times the last number. Okay, so I've got my negative 5 and my 4. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give negative 5, but times together, so add together to give 4. So they multiply to give negative 5, but they add together to give 4. So again, we've got a nice number because 5 is a prime number. So we know the two numbers can only be 5 and 1. The only two, what, two numbers that we can use. But what order can I use 5 and 1 in order to make 4? Well, if I add them, I get 6. That doesn't work. What if I do 5 take away 1? Well, 5 take away 1 equals 4. So now if I just double check the top one again, if I times them together, 5 times negative 1, we get the negative 5, so that works out. And 5 minus 1 makes 4. Awesome. So now let's split that term, 4x. We're going to split up into 5x minus 1x. Let's have a look. x squared plus the 5x minus the 1x and then we've got minus 5. So all I've done there is I've split 4x up into 5x minus 1x. Okay, because remember 5x minus 1x makes the 4x. But the whole idea of splitting it up is so that I can now factorise the first two terms and the last two terms. So what goes into x squared and 5x? Well x does. x times x makes x squared and x times 5 makes 5x. Awesome. What goes into negative 1 and negative 5? Well, hopefully you said negative 1 does. And then what goes in the brackets? Well, negative 1 times x makes negative 1x. And negative 1 times, this is the tricky bit, positive 5. If I had negative 5 there, that would make it a positive 5, wouldn't it? Because negative 1 times negative 5 makes positive 5. But we want negative 1 times positive 5. Negative and a positive makes that negative. Another trick to remember is if you do it correctly, these brackets have to be the same. So if they're not the same, you'll know that you've done something wrong. 
and often it's to do through those sort of negatives. But once I've done that, the brackets are now the same. It's simply a matter of doing x plus 5 in one set of brackets, and the other set of brackets puts whatever is at the front, x minus 1. Because so we simply factorise the x plus 5 out, because it was common in both. And look at that. We've got our answer. Our x squared plus 4x minus 5 can be factorised to be x plus 5x minus 1. I'm going to do one more example before I show you the, uh, the uh, shortcut. Okay. Alright, so a last example before we show, do the shortcut. We're going to look at x squared, another tricky one. We're going to do plus, uh, let's say, 8x. Actually, let's not do plus. We're going to do minus. So x squared minus 8x plus, and we'll do 12. Okay, x squared minus 8x plus 12. Now, obviously, <coughs> the hard part of this will be finding your two numbers. Okay, so let's start by doing our product and sum. Our values are the 1 times positive 12, well that makes 12, and the sum in this case is negative 8. So we've got two challenges here. The first challenge is 12 is not a prime number, so there's going to be a lot of factors. Okay, we've got 1, 2, we've got uh, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So lots of different combinations. So let's start off by looking at 1 and 12. Can 1 and 12 somehow make 8? Nope. Can 3 and 4 somehow make 8? No. Can 6 and 2 somehow make 8? Yes. Sometimes there might be two possible combinations and you have to try to work them out and it's a bit of trial and error. But in this case, looking at my factors of 12, it can only be 6 and 2 because they can be the only two numbers that can somehow be arranged to make negative 8 or 8. So we know they're going to be 6 and 2. So I start by that. Now we have to look at the negatives. How can 6 and 2 possibly make minus 8? Sometimes that can be a bit tough because we're going 6 plus 2, <coughs> so excuse me, is 8, 6 minus 2, minus 6 plus 2. There's lots of different combinations. Something that I do know that if I times these two things together, they may need to make positive 12. But hold on, we know that one of them at least has to be a negative. How can we multiply two numbers together to give a positive number? Well, only if they're both positive or if they're both negative. So in this case, minus 6x minus 2x makes that minus 8x. So in this case, they're both negative. So try all your different combinations, but often there can be little tricks, like for example, if we times them both together, and they're a positive number, that can only be one combination, that can be both positive or both negative, sorry, two combinations. Um, if the product is a negative, then there has to be mixed signs. Okay, but let's have a look at this. Now we've got x squared minus 6x minus 2x plus 12. I like to underline the two first two pairs, or the first pair and the second pair. And now let's factorize. What goes into x squared and 6x? Well, x does, and we have x minus 6 in brackets. We've got negative, let's try negative 2. Okay, because that 2 goes into both. Negative 2 times x makes negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 6. Remember, we want a positive 12. So the only way we can do that is by the minus 2 times the minus 6. But what's that other thing that sort of helps us remember? The brackets have to be the same. Okay, the brackets must be the same. So if you happen to maybe put a plus there, then obviously that's something that should stand out to you saying, hold on, I've done something wrong. Alright, now we've got x minus 6 in the first set of brackets, and the last set of brackets we have x minus 2. Okay, so again, look, these are all fairly simple, straightforward trinomials. Now, there's something I'm going to go back and show you, something that you might notice. Okay, we looked at this, and I said there might be a little bit of a trick here. What do you notice about our two numbers? We had 2 and 1, and our answer, x plus 2, x plus 1. You might notice that the 2 and the 1 
are in my answer are two and one. Let's have a look at that last one we did. We've got minus six, excuse me. We've got minus six and minus two as our two numbers that we found for product and sum, minus six and minus two in our answer. So there is a little trick to this that it can only work, and it only works for questions where it's 1x squared or just x squared. The minute you have something like 2x squared or 3x squared, the rule changes and it doesn't actually work out. But it does work out for those easy ones. So let's look at one last example. We're going to look at um, x squared plus, uh, let's do 12x plus, let's say 10. Actually, sorry, excuse me, plus 11x. So, about that. Okay, so x squared plus 11x plus 10. Okay, so let's do product and sum. Remember, our product is our first number times our last number. It makes 10. Our middle number is 11. Two numbers, okay, we've got 1 and 10. They could make 11. 5 and 2, highly doubt it. So, 1 and 10, or 10 and 1, okay, we have two numbers. How can 1 and 10 make 11? Well, if we add them together, 1 plus 10 makes 11. Because it's only a 1, or no number there, in front of the x squared, I can actually just go x plus 1, x plus 10. And I've got my answer. Okay, it's as easy as that. Okay, we might actually just do one quick last one. Let's do x squared plus 6x. Um, we'll do minus 16. So let's do our product and sum. Hopefully you can start to be uh, being quicker than me. 1 times negative 16 is negative 16, and sum is 6. So two numbers at times together to give 16. Okay, we've got 8 and 2. They possibly could make 6, so let's try those two. Remember, the top one is negative, so these are going to have to be one of them negative, one of them positive. How can you use 8 and 2 to make 6? Well, 8 take away 2 makes 6. Okay, got my two numbers. And because there's just a 1 in front of the x squared, we can do x plus 8 in one set of brackets and x minus 2. And one of the best parts about this, guys, if you have a bit of extra time in doing this, you can actually expand out the brackets as well. x times x makes x squared. Just to check your answer. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 8 times x is positive 8x. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. Obviously, those two middle parts simplify. 8 take away 2 is 6x, which gives us our original um, question of x squared plus 6x minus 16. Hopefully, this made some type of sense. I'm going to do some more challenging ones with uh, multipliers of like 2x squared or 3x squared or 4x squared. So please make sure you have a look at that uh, tutorial. Cheers, guys.